Uh, let's look at this problem um, 19. If I draw that problem, series and what's in parallel. Now, I'm finding that many of you are confused about what series means. Um, are, are this 90 in series with that 20? No or heck no? Heck no. Heck no. Things are in series when if Fred goes through one, Fred has to go through the other and vice versa. If Fred goes through the 90, he doesn't have to go through that 20. He could go through that 60. On the other hand, the 50 and the 70 are in series. If Fred goes through the 70, he has to go through the 50. If he goes through the 50, he has to go through the 70. Now sometimes I can have resistors like this that are in series. They're not along the same line, but that's not what series is. Series means if I go through this, I gotta go through that. There's only one path connecting them, okay? Now, let me ask those same questions over and over again. What's in series? Well, this is in series with that, so I can add them together. What's in parallel? Well, that's in parallel with that. Now, two 80s in parallel act like a 40. Two paths are twice as easy as one. So I can redraw this as 120 ohms on this branch, and then I come down with 60 ohms and 20 ohms, and the 240s look like a, I'm sorry, the 280s look like a 40, and then the 90. Then I ask again, is anything in series? Well, yeah. The 20 and the 40 are in series. So I can replace those by their sum. 20 and 40 add up to 60. Then I ask, is anything in parallel? Yeah, those guys. Two 60s in parallel look like a 30. <laughs> then I ask, is anything in series? Yeah, 30 and 90 looks like 120. Now on your test, you might have to use the back page of your uh, exam to draw these all out because you won't have an eraser like mine. And now I ask, is anything in uh, parallel? And sure enough, this whole thing boils down to a single resistor that is 60 ohms. And since we've got, in that case, 120 volts. V equals IR means that I've got two amps. So once you've got the current through the battery, you go back to the original, you take that two amps that goes through the battery, and you watch it flow through the circuit. And everywhere it splits, you ask, does it split 50-50 or some other way? Now, when it splits here, it comes back together there. This path looks like 120 ohms. This path looks like 120 ohms. Indeed, it looks like I'm splitting here and here. So that's going to split with one amp going this way and one amp going that way. When I split here, I come back together there. This path looks like 60. This path looks like 60. 
And so it splits 50-50 with a half amp going that way and a half amp going that way. When it splits here, it's 50-50, so that's going to be a quarter and a quarter. And then the two quarters come back and I get a half, and this half comes with that and I get a one, and that one adds with this one to give me two, and that two goes back to the battery. Now, to find the voltage across any resistor, I use V equals IR locally. Uh, here, if I want the voltage across that, I take one amp times 50 ohms, 50 volts. One amp times 70 ohms, 70 <coughs> volts. 50 plus 70 equals 120. Let's look at this here. A uh, half amp going through 60 ohms is going to give me a voltage difference of 30 volts. One amp going through 90 is going to give me 90 volts. 30 plus 90 equals 120. Here I've got a half amp going through 20 ohms. That's 10 volts. I've got a quarter of an amp going through 80 ohms. That's going to be 20 volts. 10 plus 20 plus 90, 120. Any path I choose adds up to 120. See if your neighbor's on the bus. Okay. <laughs> I got my pad, but that's okay. <laughs> I got this email from a very confused young man. He said, I'm in your 206 class. I used to have a grasp on what would make a bulb brighter until I learned the voltage model, and now I'm completely lost. Any of you feel that way? Leave your hands down. <laughs> current will take the path of least resistance, so the bulb that sees more current will be brighter. I understand this to mean less resistance, more glow. In the voltage model, there would be a higher voltage drop over the bulb with more resistance. I understand this to mean more resistance, more glow. Did my brain, to my brain, this seems to be a contradiction. Now, here's the maturity of this young individual. He does not blame the universe. He does not say physics is wrong. 
He says, I know there's an error in the way I'm thinking. I just can't find it. Hell. 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 Okay. <laughs> now, let's see if we can uh, straighten this out. There are three major types of circuit. And I'm going to draw them for you. I put them on a, a summary sheet that I handed out. You don't need to get it out. I'll draw it. We have two different kinds of parallel. We have vanilla parallel. Or I'd say A and B are parallel. We also have parallel across the battery, the tutti frutti. Now, in all of these cases, the voltage across parallel branches has to be the same. That means the voltage across A has to equal the voltage across B. And when I say voltage, I mean the change in voltage. Okay? So if they're regular parallel or parallel across the battery, I have to have the same volts across both. Now if I look at V equals IR, that means that this has to be the same for both A and B. And so if that's the same, and I have a bigger resistance, I'm going to have a smaller current. Now, if I assume that one of these boxes has a small resistance, and one has a big resistance, what that means is that when the current splits here, I'm going to get a gusher of current going the easy way, and a trickle going the hard way. Okay? Now, the third kind of circuit is when things are in series. Now, when things are in series, it's the current that has to be the same for A and B. There's no other path. Whatever goes through one has to go through the other. So if I look at V equals IR, if the current has to stay the same, then if I've got a big resistance, I've got a bigger <coughs> voltage. So that means if this is the small resistance and this is the big resistance, I would have a, a bigger voltage across B. Now, here's what the student is saying. If A and B each contain a single bulb, A is going to get more current, so it'll be brighter there. A is going to get less volts here, so it's going to be dimmer there. That can be. That's contradictory. <coughs> And the problem is assuming that both of those boxes can each contain one bulb. If we're dealing with identical bulbs, and each box has one bulb, both boxes have the same resistance. Okay? Now, I could, I could put a single bulb in A and put two bulbs in B, in which case this would be the brightest bulb and these would be two dim bulbs. And then when I put those same boxes in series, well, if this is a 12 volt battery, I would have four volts over this box and eight volt volts across that box, but each bulb would have four volts across it and they would all be equally bright. Okay, so the, the contradiction is in thinking that one bulb can have more resistance than another. 
they're identical bulbs. And if one bulb has more volts across it, that more volts is going to drive more current. So the bulb with more volts will always be brighter, the bulb with more current will always be brighter, and the one causes the other. Now, you know that when you go to Home Depot, there's lots of bulbs that are non-identical. There's a whole row of bulbs that are different. And if you were to take, this is the way your house is wired. If you were to take a single bulb that is 100 watt and another bulb that's 40 watt, the 100 watt bulb is brighter when hooked up the way it's supposed to be hooked up. What does that tell you about the resistance of a 100 watt bulb compared to a 40? It's going to be less. And I'm here to tell you that if you take a 40 watt, if you take a 100 watt bulb and you hook it up in series with a 40 watt bulb, that's the way you're not supposed to hook up bulbs. The 40 watt bulb will be brighter than the 100 watt bulb. You never see that because you never hook them up that way. But on our exam, all bulbs will be identical. We're not going to have some bulbs with more resistance than others, okay? See if your neighbor's on the bus, people. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, let's look at some of these problems that uh, I've just handed out to you. Um, in this problem, we have two paths that are clearly uh, independent of each other, the left and the right. And the first thing we're asked to compare are A and C, and those are both indicator bulbs for their respective branches. So really quick, tell your neighbor which is going to be brighter, A or C. A. Uh. No way, A is brighter. branches identical. And if this were the circuit, the current would split 50-50 uh, there. And then you ask yourself, what's missing? Well, what's missing are D and E. And the question is, how do I add them? They're a parallel network, but that's not what I'm, I'm asking. How are they added? And to answer that question, Ask yourself if you're reaching for the eraser. If I have to pick up the eraser and break an existing line to shove the new stuff in, I just cluttered an existing path. I just added those in series. I just increased the resistance, so now, if this is the resistance of one, the resistance of two is bigger. And that means it doesn't split 50-50 here, but some other way. <clears throat> okay? 
That makes sense? So if I were to take this exam, I would say uh, A is brighter than C. If this is branch 1 and this is branch 2, 2 is the same as 1 except for the extra clog with D and E. That means that the resistance of 2 is greater than the resistance of 1. The current through 2 is less than the current through 1. And A and C are indicators. Again, you could probably leave off that last step and get full credit. Uh, C and D. C is brighter than D. This is an all versus part argument. The current through C is equal to the current through D plus the current through E. C and F. Uh, that's easy. C is equal to F, and I can justify that with one word, series. Now, if I remove bulb D, but leave the empty socket behind, I'm leaving a gaping hole. I am breaking the path. And that is going to do what to bulb A? Not Nothing. Because A is on an independent path parallel across the battery. What about E? Okay. Uh, it turns out that E is getting a bigger share of a smaller amount of current through branch 2. The current model fails. So we have to pick a, a path through E. And set it equal to the battery voltage. By removing a path, I have less current through branch 2. C and F are both indicators for branch 2, and so that means that C and F get dimmer. And in order to make that still equal to 12, that means that E has to get brighter. So E would get brighter. So now we go back to the original circuit, we put D back in, and we add a new bulb from here to here. Well, that's the same as adding a bulb parallel to C. What's that going to do to bulb F? Remember, all the current that goes through branch 2 goes through F before the change and after the change. So it's an indicator. I just added a new path that's going to lower the resistance of branch 2, that's going to increase the current, so that means it'll get brighter. The resistance of 2 goes down, the current of 2 goes up, and F is an indicator. Bulb C. Well, if I <coughs> Use the voltage model, F plus E plus C has to add up to the 12 volts of the battery. If F gets brighter, if F gets brighter, what happens to E? Doesn't E always get half the current through F? So if there's more current going through F, and E's always getting half of that current, E's going to get brighter as well. And so that tells me what has to happen to C. It has to add up to 12, so C is going to get dimmer. Okay? Yep, it's hieroglyphics, but I am Egyptian. Okay? Now,
Yes, sir. What would that circuit look like had it been added in parallel, D and E, not cut in in series? How would that, would there be a line down the middle? Uh, no, it would, uh, if you started with this, and added them in series to something. Yeah, as far as on the diagram. I know before you showed You'd have to put it in parallel to something. You can't just put it parallel to a wire and it starts out shorted out. Yeah. But that's not the circuit, folks. Pay no attention. That's the circuit. Okay, now we take a connecting wire and we Connect it from there to there. Now remember, there's two kinds of wire. Connecting wire has zero resistance. Nitrome wire has resistance. example, we could move that connection and we didn't change the circuit. So here, if I move that connection, have I changed the circuit? No. If I change, have I changed the circuit? No. And now it's clear C, D, and E are shorted. A and B are just on an independent path. They still have six volts apiece. And F is going to get brighter because it's an indicator ball and I just added a path, the really good path, making more current go down that uh, side too. Check if your neighbor's okay with that. Check if your neighbor's okay. Whether I touch it here, or whether I touch it there, whether I touch it there, or whether I touch it there, all the same. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, let's turn the page. <laughs> Folks, this question when it was on an exam turned out to be extremely hard. A lot of people got it wrong. And here's two ways that they got it wrong. One group said, hey, I got branch one, I got branch two, I got branch three, and they're all independent of each other. No or heck no? Heck no. Can you give me your reasoning just by giving me one letter of the alphabet? D. D. Yeah, that bold D is in the way there. Okay. And clearly, if you think those three circuits or those three branches are independent, you get a, a vastly different answer than the correct one. Essentially, you get zero points for that thing. Don't make that mistake. Now, here's the other mistake that people made. They said, oh, well, there's really only two branches, A, B, and C, and the rest of it. Now, that's true. That's true. But then they said, oh, man, look at all these, all these branches over here. Branches are good. I got a lot of people in the class to take off their shoes and count on their toes, and then I had them. I destroyed them. I, I didn't want to, but I did. They're not doctors now. Um, well, some of them are doctors. They're just not good doctors. Okay. What we do is we draw those two circuits, those two branches, identical. The easy one is branch one with A, B, and C. And you can see that all the current that goes through branch one has to go through C. Well, let's look at this other branch. Which bulb would be the indicator bulb for, for that branch? D. D. And so, since D is up here, I'm going to draw this branch identical but flipped. And then I just have to identify these other two bulbs. If this is D, what are these other two bulbs? Well, after I leave D, I split, and I can go through E or J. And so this is going to be bulb E, and this will be bulb J. Now, that's branch two, almost. Now, if those were the only bulbs in the circuit, then clearly it would split 50-50 here. But something's missing. And what's missing is F, G, and H. Now that's a parallel network, but I don't care. What I care about is how is it added. And in order to add it, I've got to pick up my eraser. I've got to take scissors, as it were, and break an existing line <laughs> and put in that extra box X, where X is equal to Okay? So, what I would do I've got plenty of copy for this, is I would, in comparing the two uh, indicator bulbs, C and D, I would say that C is brighter than D. I would label this as branch one and all of this as branch two, and I would say the resistance of two is greater, whoops, two is spelled that way, 2 is greater than the resistance of 1. 
And I would justify that by saying 2 is the same as 1, except for an extra claw with F, G, H. That means that the current through 2 is less than the current through 1, and uh, C and D are indicators. Did I do that correctly? Yep. Now, B and J. Oh, E and J. Um, e is less than J, and I would just say current favors the path of least resistance. Essentially what I'm asking here is how does the current split right there? 50-50 or some other way? Well, without box X, it split 50-50. Adding box X in series means I'm going to give more than half this way, less than half the hard way. So E is going to be dimmer. Okay? Uh, B and J, B gets half of the big pizza, J gets more than half of the small pizza, uh, can't do it with current. So I pick a path through B, and that equals the 12 volts of the battery. I pick a path through J, and that equals 12 volts of the battery. If I want to compare B and J, I first compare the other two. I know that C is brighter than D, so the voltage of C is bigger than the voltage across D. And that means when I do it for B and J, it goes the other way. So J is brighter than B. That making sense? Now, if I look at A and E, A gets exactly half of the current through 1, and E gets less than half of the current through 2. O and the current through 1 is bigger than... Uh, the current through 1 is bigger than the current through 2. So A is getting half of the big pizza, E is getting less than half of the small pizza. If you were hungry, you'd know what to choose. Half of the big pizza or less than half of the small pizza. You choose. Okay? Now, we make a change. We short out bulb F. So we come here and we short out bulb F by putting a connecting wire from one side to the other. Now, in shorting out bulb F, I also bulb, uh, short out bulb G and bulb H. It's the same as if I took a connecting wire and put it from one side of this box X to the other. Okay? Now you can either think of that as adding a path, that's going to make D brighter, or you can think of it as removing a clog, that's going to make D brighter. Either way you think about it, D gets brighter. Now suddenly, branch 2 looks exactly the same as branch 1. By shorting out bulb F, I have made the two branches identical. Okay. So let's finish up this problem. H will go out. It's shorted out. D will get brighter. We've added a path. The resistance of 2 goes down. The current through 2 goes up. And D is an indicator. B is on an independent path. And J, well, the voltage across D plus the voltage across J equals 12 volts. 
If D gets brighter, J has to get dimmer. Okay, I hope you're bored. I, I hope you're way bored. Okay? Now, yes, sir. So, why would, if you're just switching out and pull the F, why would F, G, and H all go out? Oh, because F, G, and H are parallel to each other. So, by putting a wire from there to there, I could move that connection to there, and I can move this connection to there, and it's as if I'm shorting out the whole thing. As long as it's got to choose between F, G, H, or a wire, it's all going to take the wire. Essentially, you short out one parallel Yep. And it doesn't matter what's in parallel. You short one parallel path, you short it all of them. Okay, we've got five minutes. Let's, uh, let's look at this problem here. You have a bulb and it's connected in parallel to two resistors, a 300 and a 200. And that network is in series with the 360. You have a voltmeter, and you are measuring the voltage across this bulb. You've got your voltmeter hooked up, and while you're sitting there looking at the voltmeter, the bulb blows. It pops. Now, when a bulb burns out, you've melted the filament. It's exactly the same as taking the bulb out of the socket and leaving the empty socket behind. A gaping hole. So the question is, what happens to the reading on your voltmeter when that happens? Does it go up, go down, or stay the same? Well, since I'm asking about voltage, let's use the voltage model. Any path from one side of the battery to the other has to have up to 12 volts. So the voltage across the 360 ohm resistor plus the voltage across the socket has to add up to 12 volts. Now when you burn out that bulb, you've removed a path. What does that do to the current through the battery? It goes down. Now if there's less current through the battery, there's less current through that 360 ohms because it's an indicator resistor. Okay? Now by V equals IR, if this is 360, if the I gets smaller, the V gets smaller. So this gets smaller. It's a zero-sum game, so the voltage across the socket has to increase. Now, the second part of this problem asks us to find the current through the battery after the bulb burns out. Well, this means we have to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Well, I've got 360 in series with a 300 and a 200. Now, a 300 in parallel with a 200 is less than the least. That's going to be equal to something less than 200. I find the lowest common multiple, that's 600, and I can, I can write a 300 as two 600s. I can draw a 200 as three 600s. There's my 300, there's my 200. And now I've got five paths, each of them with the same resistance. The resistance is going to be 600 ohms over five paths, or 120 ohms. That's less than 200. So this whole circuit, without the filament in the bulb, <coughs> looks like 
360 and 120 and this is 12 volts. If I use V equals IR, this is the battery voltage, this is the current through the battery, and this is going to be 480 ohms. When I divide up the voltage between these two, this is three times harder to get through, so it gets three times as many volts, and so I'm going to have nine volts and three volts. Now, all parallel paths have the same voltage, so that means if you're uh, measuring the voltage across that bottom box, you're also measuring the voltage across the socket. So after the bulb burns out, the reading on the voltmeter will be three volts. Three volts. Oh, I did that fast, because I'm out of time. Good luck tonight, people. Thank <laughs> you.